Thank you. My name is Roy Sargent. I'm the Director of Business Improvements and Systems for QBuild. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the Indigenous owners of the land on which we meet um, collectively from wherever we are. Um, in this location, it's the Yagara and Turrbal peoples and pay my respects to um, elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to remind you all that we're actually recording this session for later distribution. Um, I'd also like to actually advise you that our external property advisor is online. And I'd like to also um, ask that questions be held until the end of the presentation. There's not a huge number of slides, so if you can hold on, that would be really good. Thank you. Okay, so um, just a bit of background from uh, QBuild. We're a commercialised business unit of the Queensland Government. We partner with government agencies to deliver plan, build and maintain services, so the suite of asset management. We manage and deliver approximately one and a half billion worth of annual work programs um, aligned to each state budget cycle. Um, we've developed a, a future ICT enabled vision um, this year to provide foundation to support the future of QBuild service delivery. Um, it actually, uh, you can see on, on the bottom of that particular slide, a number of the components to retire bespoke systems, to uplift staff capability, improve information and enable um, asset life cycle management approach to government assets. So a realistic action plan paving the way for digital initiatives to support future QBuild return on investment has been developed and this multi-year horizon strengthens our capability across the process, technology and people and forms the basis for this EOI. Um, so from a technology perspective, so um, just taking out the, the capability and the process bit for a moment, um, the purpose of this EOI um, is to invite the suitably qualified organisations to provide us with information to enable us to um, um, better plan how we're going to implement our roadmap. It's provide foundation ICT enablement services to support us into the future. Um, we are looking to align with existing whole of government solutions where possible. We are looking to have commercial off the self solutions with a preference for software as a service as the preferred model. We want to have a vanilla approach to configuration, integration and implementation of these systems. We would like to integrate um, each component of that solution into a solution ecosystem that provides a platform to enable us to do the capability uplift across information, process, technology and people. Uh, we are looking to actually get more information about um, alternative innovative ways to address our needs. Um, we're happy to have um, consortiums um, participate to address those EOI requirements and the areas that we're looking at which are covered in the EOI documentation includes licensed software, uh, software support services, implementation services, hosting and any associated professional services such as training in technology solutions. So basically at the moment um, we actually have a heavily customised version of uh, Ellipse, uh, which is an asset, uh, enterprise asset management system, um, and it actually um, is underpinned by a whole pile of bespoke applications, and we actually want to move to a whole pile of um, applications that are not bespoke, that are actually COPS, that are SAS, um, and have them seamlessly integrated to enable us to efficiently deliver what we actually are looking to deliver in that asset management space. Um, this is a really difficult 
picture to, to see on the screen, but um, as I said, the, um, app, the presentation being recorded will be put up on uh, QTenders um, as soon as possible after this session. You'll be able to actually um, drill into these particular uh, diagrams. Um, each of um, these diagrams uh, is designed to provide a little bit more information about the systems that we currently have. Um, this is splitting our existing applications into um, the plan, build, maintain services. Um, the uh, orange dots um, for your information are the ones that are impacted by the future state and are, are part of the EOI. So from a procurement sense, um, our objectives, and these are uh, clearly articulated in the EOI documents. Um, so the high level objectives of the EOI, to enable significant improvement to our asset management maturity through a digital enablement program, to allow for reuse of design and implementation of artifacts between Queensland government entities, which is a whole of government um, focus to reduce any duplication of ongoing cost solutions for solutions between those entities and the efficient management and use of software licenses between Queensland government agencies. So um, under the Queensland government procurement plan, um, we're looking to, to have innovative, socially responsible, long-term strategic business partners that can align to objectives outlined within the EOI. So we've specifically called out nine um, technology ecosystem components. Um, so these applications are on the screen at the moment. Um, they are all related to our function in that management space. So um, there's an estimating package, an asset management information system, site induction and access, uh, project management for capital works and construction management, a work field, sort, field service management system on the basis we actually have um, a large number of trade field staff, a uh, project program scheduling system, um, a customer service and support telephony system, a marketing, marketing and advocacy system, and a portfolio demand management system. So um, the details are from um, the respondents to the EOI. These are the things that you need to actually uh, comply with. So there's uh, on the left compliance with the requirements of the expression of interest invitation and schedule for the invitation to offer conditions. Um, it's to be submitted in format detailed in Schedule 2, um, which actually does um, tell you the form that we're actually after the information. The lodgements to be submitted um, electronically by the Queensland Government QTenders website, um, the member login citing that particular reference before the closing date and time. Um, you will need to ensure your response forms and documents are virus free and be virus checked prior to submission. Um, any document I understand that's a, um, that goes through our virus checker is actually quarantined and will not necessarily be able to be accessed. So please ensure you undertake that. And then there are some indicative timeframes which are subject to change. Um, there is a date for closing of questions. So uh, we'll not be actually answering any questions after the two o'clock on the 13th of January which is exactly one week before um, any of the responses are actually um, closed. Um, we're planning to uh, spend the next week and a half um, shortlisting supplies for two specific ITOs, um, which this EOI is going to inform. One for the site induction and access solution um, due out in mid-February, and the asset management information system um, is going to be going out in late February. Um, as I mentioned, our external private advisor is actually uh, on this call. Um, we will actually be um, 
very heavily focusing on the probity of this activity. Um, there are five, six, number, six specific principles. Um, independence, so um, DPW uh, personnel and their advisors will be free of conflicts. Um, suppliers must not seek to offer any gifts and benefits or inducements. Um, equity, equal access to relevant information will be provided to suppliers um, and along with equity and evaluation. And suppliers must not seek to access information other than through the contact officer. Um, accountability decisions will be based on the evaluation plan for the procurement and documented in accordance with best practice requirements. Transparency. The EOI process will be auditable and transparent um, with our probity advisor reporting to oversee the process. Security, physical and electronic security measures have been implemented and will be adhered to. And in confidentiality, processes to maintain confidentiality um, have been established. Um, and the failure to comply with the conditions of the EOI will result in your offer being deemed non-conforming. So please ensure all contact is only with the contact officer in um, otherwise in accordance with conditions um, and the contact officer for this activity is Kim Aiken, who's um, sitting on the call as well. Um, should um, anybody have an issue with probity, we take those probity matters very seriously. Um, as we have said several times, an external probity advisor have been appointed to oversee the process. Um, any person or party as part of this process can raise a probity issue. The EOI contact officer, Kim Aiken, um, can be approached with those four sets of information if you have a probity concern. Um, and the Public Interest Disclosure Act and the Crime and Corruption Act apply to this procurement process. And any person may also raise a concern to the authorised officer under those acts. That's the sum total of the formal presentation component. So um, at this point, I just want to reiterate both that the um, this session is being recorded and will be available um, online um, after the event. And um, there's now the ability for any of those people online um, should they choose to um, ask any questions. Um, I, I, if I may, um, is there an intention through the framework uh, to engage with the contractor network or is it designed for internal operation integration only? Um, David, I think it was you who asked that question. Yes, yes. Um, could you um, could you expand on the question in terms of? Sure. Uh, so obviously your uh, your intention is to uh, integrate your uh, workflows and information internally for your own internal operation. Yes. Um, so, uh, but the contractor management side integration or um, uh, connection or uh, with with the uh, supply chain, is there any intention to be able to have that connectability? Um, generically, we um, are looking at how we would actually integrate across the supply chain. Yeah. Uh, but no formal decision has been made at this stage about um, the breadth or depth of that. Or the mechanism of that. Yes. Mm. Now, fair enough too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I ask, um, hi, it's Dina here. Um, what's the size of your current uh, field force? Um, around about 800 field staff at the moment. Um, but we have been going through a process of um, employing more apprentices and field staff, so that number is likely to grow. Um, but we have around about 800 at the moment. That's including um, subcontractor staff, or that's uh, in addition to that? 
So that that is um, solely our own paid um, government employees. Yeah. Uh, you have something in the order of six thousand um, contract suppliers. Thank you. Uh, sorry, so just to expand on that question a little, is it fair to say then that out of that 800 field staff that are government employees, all of those would uh, access the system or are you imagining that there'd be a, you know, a number of field staff that, that wouldn't actually be live within the system? Um, within our framework, we um, have to be able to collect information from all of those field staff, um, particularly for um, labour costing. We actually have, um, being a commercialised business unit, we actually charge for our services. So field staff work on a um, cost recoverable basis. So all of those people would have some access to things such as timesheet and labour costing. Um, the extent that they would actually go beyond that depends on the role that they're actually undertaking. So David again, so I assume mobility is essential. Yes. I should also state, um, and it, was, it may not have been very clear across the um, presentation, we actually are um, based across the state. We have 33 locations from um, Thursday Island down to uh, Rabina. We also have some discrete placements in some of our partner facilities in our facilities management relationship. So from our perspective, access to this information is required across the state, not just in major um, centres. Hi, it's Dina again. Um, just in regards to your financial systems, um, do you foresee that you will be retaining Ellipse? Does Ellipse currently maintain your financial uh, and procurement um, functions? Um, Ellipse at the moment is um, the main system that we actually have and we are slowly going to be migrating things off that platform given that it actually is at end of life. So we will be looking to move um, all of those core functions. Um, a lot of them are actually um, in that list of nine. Um, which does include finance, yes. Thank you. So the mechanism, sorry, David, again. So the mechanisms would be to, to integrate with Eclipse with the view to have a, a, a plan to move to a, a selected system down the track that's your strategy so the plan is to get enough information out of this doi for us to flesh out a plan on how we're going to migrate away from ellipse yep um understanding that the government doesn't do big bang transfers anymore and we have to therefore have a suitable transition plan essential yeah very good. And the finance system is yet to be selected. Um, a component of the finance system will end up being the whole of government SAP. Right. But, but the level of um, other functionality, because finance isn't just a single function, um, is still to be determined. Yep. Fair enough. Thank you. So if there aren't any further questions, give your last call out there. 
Um, if there are no further questions, then we will call it. Um, and thank you for your participation. I remind you that the a copy of this is actually going to go up um, on e-tenders, so that any um, of the suppliers that were not able to attend for whatever reason do have a copy of both the presentation and the question and answers for equity. So thank you all for attending. Um, if you have any further queries, um, by all means, please put them in. They will have to go through Kim, who will ensure that the appropriate answer is provided, as well as making sure that that answer is also provided through um, a few tenders. Um, so thank you all for attending. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just Google's a wonderful.